The month of November is wrapped up. December is well underway. Winnie Sun, managing director and co-founder of Sun Group Wealth Partners, uh, joins us once again to talk about it all. I mean, we had some pretty solid returns when you look uh, specifically at the month of November. The question is not only December, but are investors going to see this uh, type of return come 2021? Well, you know, that's, so that's really good news. If you follow a history with the stock markets having an incredibly strong November, if you review the past 30 years of stock market, it actually shows that when you have a better than a typical year, which is surprising that we saw with the 2020 stock market, you tend to see a better than typical December. And here's the best part. It's also followed with an even better next 12 months as well. Of course, there's no guarantees, but this is going past in you know, the last 30 years of the stock market. And thanks to some analysis done by asset management firm Jeffries, I thought it was really interesting. I think it gives a lot of investors a lot of optimism. Yeah, especially when you see some companies, at least in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, about to, to file and go public for the first time, including, mm -hmm. you know, Airbnb being one of them. Uh, when it comes to vaccine news, or I know millions of people are still unemployed or unemployment numbers, do you think investors right now, when you're looking at one or the other with more importance? I think so. I think, you know, investors and vaccine news, I think, uh, by and large, I think that's a lot of that's priced in right now, but investors are certainly thinking things are going to get back to normal. And so they're looking at um, really taking a proactive approach to investing in the stocks that they liked before, thinking if things are going to get back to normal, I'm going to be able to get it back on that cruise. I'm going to get, be able to get back to see my family. Then, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So therefore, investors overall are very optimistic. I keep thinking, I haven't heard from my company, but whether or not companies in general will make employees get a vaccine, you know, in order to get back into the building and to get, you know, out of this work from home environment. Yeah, that's a, it's very controversial on this. You know, there was a certain some news reports came out yesterday and they're saying that legally t your employer actually can make you be required to take a vaccine. Now, you have that option, obviously, not to, but the, your employer then has the right to potentially let you go, too. So that's how it stands right now. I think, you know, that's a, according to employment attorneys. So keep that in mind. But I, I think, um, you know, I'm an employer, too. I have employees. I think this is an opportunity for us to have a very open discussion mm -hmm. about how we feel about things and maybe come to some sort of an agreement. But there are, there's also the flip side. Some attorneys are saying, well, that could actually be discriminatory. So yeah. um, I think it's sort of a wait to see situation, but certainly uh, big news right now in terms of what that's going to look like uh, with the vaccine coming. Yeah. Out. It'll be interesting to see how it rolls out. I agree with you on that. Speaking of agreement, uh, on Capitol Hill, Congress, what is the latest uh, from your take on a new stimulus relief package. So many of us at home, uh, especially those unemployed, wondering, am I going to get a check? Am I going to get money? Well, you know, we saw last week that uh, Bipartisan proposed an $808 billion plan. So uh, unfortunately, you know, fortunately, you know, the plan does include a lot of things like more aid to small businesses, PPP loans, uh, unemployment enhanced benefit, vaccine benefits, and, and obviously things for education and whatnot. But what it doesn't include is it doesn't include a $1,200 stimulus check, which I thought was really interesting. But here's also more bad news. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be passed because Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he will not absolutely uh, support that plan because his top priority is to make sure that there are federal limits on COVID-19 related lawsuits against businesses. And right now, this proposal only includes six months of protection for businesses. And he says that's just not enough yet. Uh, student loan payments. This is an interesting topic because here we are, kind of lame duck session, President-elect Joe Biden taking office on the 20th of January. Um, what do you foresee next year with, with this new administration? You know, there's been talk of forgiving entire loans. Uh, they've been suspended. Uh, what do you think this new administration will do? Well, it's interesting because, you know, uh, we've heard there's actually a lot of talk about student loans right now that we fortunately they've been pushed back for another month. So students right now have more time to make those payments. However, that being said, you've got 40 million plus Americans with student debt. Now, President elect Biden has said he's been very careful about this. He sort of said, you know, I can take I can think about maybe a $10,000 waiver for student loans, but a lot of 
people on his party actually aren't really satisfied with that. You know, Schumer's obviously asking for a lot more. We remember um, Senator uh, Warren asked for even more. Uh, however, that being said, I think that, that it's very controversial because they there's a there was a recent survey that showed that 58 percent of registered voters were in support of student loan forgiveness. Um, and in fact, less than 11% of those with student loans right now are actually keeping up and paying those bills during the pandemic. So I think one way or the other, we can expect some sort of waiver on our student debt. But think about people, many of us who like I have student debt, you may have as well, and we were able to pay those off or we made decisions to go to less expensive schools or even, yeah. you know, not go to grad school or whatnot just to save some money. So I think it's still very controversial because people are also saying, well, it's just not fair. If, you know, you chose a really expensive education, and I'm going to have to cover that cost as a taxpayer. Uh, it was always my last bill of the month, especially when I was young and coming out of college and didn't have, you know, barely making rent. You know, if I missed a mm -hmm. student loan payment, I'm not advising people to do that, but I was just saying mm -hmm. it was the last bill of the month for me. Uh, one for the road, Winnie. Uh, so many Americans still unemployed. We know the numbers. So for those, and now we see vaccinations, people getting vaccinated in the United Kingdom right now, hopefully here in the States you know, next week. And, and for those who are unemployed and they're, they're looking to get back into the market with the vaccines, how do they get ahead of everyone else? You know, how do they make themselves uh, look enticing for someone who is looking to get back into hiring more people for their companies? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a really great question. A lot of people have been thinking about that. I'm talking to a lot of clients right now with that same concern. You know, the good news is as things get better, our employers will soon be looking to hire um, employees again. So I would say, here's what you wanna focus on. Um, and I just talked to a client about this on Friday. You wanna really think about how you can diversify your skill set right now, you know? You wanna market yourself like a business. You just don't wanna disappear. So take this time to create connections online, create content on your expertise, join industry online organizations, attend virtual events if you can, and Google, do your research, because there's a lot of people out there who could potentially be your future employer. So update your LinkedIn profile. Um, really big one, add recommendations. So get people who love you to say good things about you, update your picture, put that circle that says, uh, around your profile picture that says you're available for work. And I think that will be a good start. So don't sit back on the couch. And <laughs> you know what? That's maybe not the best investment That's, of your time. <laughs> never really has been, I think. All right. Winnie Sun, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Sun Group Wealth Partners. Uh, always a pleasure. Thanks, Winnie. Have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Mike. Take care.